Welcome back to another Hearts of Iron 4 multiplayer guide. Today we're covering the UK. We're going to be covering everything from construction, focus trees, technology paths, construction, pretty much even build up. Everything you need to know about playing this game in multiplayer or single player we're going to be covering today. Today's country is the United Kingdom. Now I want to go ahead and mention something very, very important. Now, when we get to the focus tree paths, you're going to notice a couple weird things that seem kind of out of line. That's because we're expecting this to play out as a multiplayer game. In multiplayer, there's a lot of things you can always count on. For example, Romania is going to be asked by the Axis to rush Fighter 2 production. As the United Kingdom, you're going to ask Australia to use his fighter bonus to rush for Fighter 2s. And pretty much you guys are going to, allies and Axis are going to compete trying to have somebody get Fighter 2s first. We're expecting the build up of Canada. We're expecting an Australia player. We're pretty much expecting a normal large scale multiplayer game, which is why there's going to be a bunch of different focuses in here to help really your puppets. So anyway, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get on into this guide. Actually, one other thing I did forget really quick. I am going to also in the comment section below have a little pinned message. That's going to be a few extra tips that I don't have time to fit into the video or something that I learned from a couple people giving me tips after the video was out. So make sure you go down there and look at that because there are going to be tips updated kind of regularly on there. So for the first thing, let's go ahead and cover the focus tree path. Now, I want to go ahead and point out a couple really important things. First off, if you can get Shadow Scheme earlier than where it is on the list, I would recommend getting Shadow Scheme as early as possible. Don't rush for the extra research slot, though, because you have to get this focus here. It's, w it's way more better to just wait a little while, wait like a year until you've gotten your industry tech pretty up to date, and then research industrial effort and use the 200% bonuses on really you want dispersed or concentrated level three or four or use it on construction three and four so make sure you wait and get that when you can apply those bonuses towards something that's going to help you second off you notice that we have a couple bonuses here over here under reinforce the no wait my bad uh, steady as she goes where was it i can't believe i just went over it uh, here we go uh, encourage the colonial elite you might notice that i'm telling you guys to do develop the raj australia all this kind of stuff right the only time you want to do that is if you're in multiplayer. You want to develop the Raj first because that way the Raj player will be able to get a better economy to fight Japan and keep them at bay for you, hopefully. Then you want to develop Australia because they're going to be the ones rushing your Fighter 2s and that's going to help them with all the factories they're already going to get for the Lend Leases and, or uh, License Production. And then finally you want to develop Canada because, well, it's Canada. Anyway, so a couple other really important things. Really, actually, correction, just one. When you get over here to a Cryptological Bomb, or cryptologic bomb air defense radar and you can finally do the tizzard mission make sure you ask the united states player before doing this if they have fighter twos either researched or they are currently researching it the reason is because it doesn't say what it does on your end but it will give the united states a 100 percent bonus for the next fighter technology so if they have fighter twos already researched and they're researching or well they don't even have fighter twos researched they're either researching it now or they have it researched this way the bonus will be applied for the next fighter technology and they can get fighter threes in like 1939 or 1940 if they have fighter twos early enough. Next up is the construction. So basically you want to build civilian factories for almost like two years. Now some people just like building mills from the start as the UK. I don't think that's a good idea at all. You want to build civilian factories in the highest industrial uh, level areas here with the highest level of infrastructure. The reason is because that will give you some speed bonuses when building factories. You want to work your way down from 90% to 80% to 70%. Oops. 80% to 70%. Anyway, the reason you want to do this, obviously, is you want to have a bunch of civilian factories available, and then by the time it's been like two years, you'll have enough to be able to fight Germany. As you can see on there, I've got the whole list uh, set up. It's not actually that extensive, but that's pretty much how you want to build. So now let's go ahead and talk about the doctrines you want to do. First off, we're going to talk about your land doctrine. You want to swap off of Grand Battle Plan and get superior firepower. It's just all around more better. You get plus 20% defense for all infantry tech and all that. You're going to have some support equipment, so it's great to do this stuff right here to get bonuses. Then you're going to want to go down Air Land Battle. So go down to uh, superior firepower, integrated support, and Air Land Battle. Now, if the Allies are going to lose the air war, you know for a fact you don't have enough fighters, which really you shouldn't. You have the United States, the Soviets, and you. You're the United Kingdom on your side. All making aircraft, you should have the air superiority advantage. But if you don't, go down shock and on and get some AA in your templates, which I'll cover in just a minute. As for your air doctrine, you want to go down strategic destruction. 
Previously, before Man the Guns, Operational Integrity was the way to go because it had a lot of fighter bonuses. Had this one right here, which was 20% agility and 20%, uh, I believe it was uh, engine power, I think. It was 20% agility and something else. But uh, now, currently, Strategic Destruction is better. It has the exact same bonuses, except it has even more bonuses over here for ground support and also for destroying factories. So later on, if you're in a multiplayer match and you're allowed to do Strategic Bombing, it is very well worth it to go down strategic destruction, even if it's not allowed. It's just all around better now. So now let's go ahead and talk about your research. Now, as you can see on the list here, there are two things that might throw people off. I say one slot dedicated to and then one of the doctrines. Basically, what that is, is once you've completed the following or the previous technologies and you get to that one slot dedicated spot, you're going to want once it's the land doctrine, you want to finish the entire land doctrine before using that slot for anything else again. Then for the air doctrine, you want to complete only down to one of two, really only one of two of these. So if your server does not allow strategic bombing, once you get to logistical bombing, stop. Okay, because these other technologies are kind or uh, researches are totally pointless to you then because strategic bombing isn't allowed. Now, if it is allowed or you do have way more than enough air XP, you know what to do with and you can rush them. Go ahead and rush down these right here and get down here to air superiority. But otherwise, once you get to logistical bombing, just stop researching because past that point, it's completely useless. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about your political power usage. So on the left hand side of your screen, just like all the other stuff, that is the list you want to take for your political power. Now, let me go ahead and say this, though, because this is really important. Instead of doing early mobilization, if you have more than I think it's 25, yeah, 25 percent war support, take partial mobilization as early as possible. And then once you go to war with Germany, as soon as you can go ahead and boost it up to war economy or if you have more than enough manpower, go to total mobilization. Now, the reason this is such a high priority is because early mob you still have a negative 10 percent building for uh, military factories, but a negative 25 percent for oil and obviously the consumer goods. This pretty much takes it down to really just almost completely remove the penalty for building civilian factories and mills and even gives you a bonus for building mills and all that kind of stuff so as soon as you can get partial mobilization next up let's talk about your production so first off i just wanted to go ahead and specify this for the united kingdom your number one priority for any of your puppets is going to be asking australia to get fighter twos now if you don't know how to do that you want to tell them to go down expand the raf and then have this little focus right here Make sure they have Fighter 1 researching or Fighter 1 almost done researching before they get this focus complete. Once they do that, they will immediately start researching Fighter 2s. And then once they have Fighter 2s, they will tell you, hey, I have Fighter 2s. Then you'll request license production from them. Go to aircraft and tell your puppet to accept it, which, well, they don't even have a choice anyway because they're your puppet. So make sure you do that. As soon as you get Fighter 2s, the number one thing you should be producing is the fighter two aircraft. Now, obviously that's because the air war is probably the most important thing in hearts of iron four. Now, before you actually get that done, the number one priorities should definitely be rifles followed by support equipment, artillery. You can pretty much almost totally abandon tanks because South Africa should be taking care of that for you along with Canada. And then just again, just concentrate on fighter aircraft. Well, actually, until you get fire twos, it's better probably to just work on interwar bombers or casts, preferably casts, though. So let's go ahead and talk about naval production. So I'm definitely going to catch a lot of flack for this, but the United Kingdom, your last priority should be Navy for quite a while. When the United Kingdom starts out, they have a way, way bigger Navy than the uh, Italian player. So what you can easily do is if you go under your research, go to naval technology and get the second level of torpedo, you can then train your Navy and start upgrading your destroyers with really high torpedo tech along with your cruisers. Now, when you do that, you are going to absolutely obliterate the enemy navies. Also, make sure you have like better ships like carriers and stuff like that in there because they all serve their purposes. However, currently in the build, if you have a ridiculous amount of torpedoes going into battle, almost guaranteed you're going to completely demolish the enemy fleet. If you have like two, three, or four times more torpedoes in the battle than the enemy, I guarantee you, you're going to win. So really you need to concentrate on adding torpedoes to your ships and also getting your carriers fit with uh, torpedo bombers and air fighters or uh, carrier fighters for that kind of stuff. Now let's talk about your templates. Now I can't give you guys like 100% guaranteed templates like, oh, this is obviously this tank template, that template. 
it pretty much what you want to do is there's two very basic division templates you always want to use as the united kingdom and that's what i'm going to be showing you guys so for the first one is your colonial garrisons now this is just a basic 10 width infantry division here this is what i like to play or uh, use whenever i'm playing the united kingdom and i even put these guys down over in uh, british malaya so it's a basic just 10 width infantry division and they're only meant for defensive actions now they're meant to guard ports against naval invasion so you can do last stand and they should be backed up with your infantry divisions so basically it is just a 7-2 infantry division which is right here okay my ocd is going to drive me absolutely crazy if i don't do this there we go so basically you just want to have a engineer recon support artillery and then if you have enough of them available throw a support aa in there as well because people don't know this but if you look over here support aa actually does increase your soft attack just a little bit so but mostly it's there to boost up your piercing and that actually boosted up by like almost 10 so that that's pretty cool so those are your two basic templates but you really want to have better ones available you want to upgrade them to 40 wits where you would just double this and uh, preferably do that for the invasion. So here we are, we are finally at war. So obviously because we're in single player, the AI couldn't, uh, you know, get fire twos. But anyway, so like I said, your fighters should be your number one priority. So I'm just prioritizing the Hawker Hurricanes along with other stuff here, like your anti-tank and all that kind of stuff, which you can add to divisions in Africa as well. I meant to mention that earlier. Uh, now let's go ahead and talk about Africa and British Malaya first. So you really want to have way more divisions than this. This is just what I popped out. You want to have South Africa bring their heavy tank divisions and any other puppets divisions up here to El Alamein. If the server allows it, you want to have really a level five fort on there earlier. Now, a lot of people say forts are kind of pointless now because the Germans have Fort Buster. That's not completely true. A lot of the time, if Germany does have Fort Buster, you're right. They're going to just push through the fort. But as soon as they're done attacking, if you're able to do last stand with a general, and by the way, to do last stand, in case you don't know, click this guy, and then you just click that button, really any general, and boom, you have last stand. So if you're able to hold it and then put it at the top of your construction, well, El Alamein, you just got rid of, you know, a bunch of their political power, their uh, command power, which is about 15 to 30. So they just lost their command power. They just used Fort Buster, but they still couldn't break through. Usually, if they can't break through the first or second time, most of the time they just give up and you have Africa secure. The next couple targets you need to do are over here in Ethiopia. Most of the time in multiplayer, the AI or uh, uh, Italy will just puppet Ethiopia and then it will be a ridiculously powerful puppet because they will pop out usually 20 to 30 divisions. So just make sure you have your puppets uh, help you out and take out Ethiopia, preferably Canada. Now let's talk about British Malaya. So over here in Asia, I do defense of uh, British Malaya in a couple ways. First off, because Siam is probably going to join the Axis, you really want to have a front line with them. After you've done their front line, I make a couple fallback lines because now the previous strategy people would do was just totally fall back to Singapore. Your resources are not in Singapore anymore. Now they're in the center of the island right here. So if you lose the center part of the island, your resources are gone. There's no more just able to fall back really quick to British Malaya or uh, fall back to Singapore and just hold it and you get your supply. It's all in the center of the island now. So there's a couple fallback lines you want to do for specific reasons. One, this fallback line here because, well, this right here, it's hills. This over here is a fort and jungle. This over here, I mean, it's all just set up perfectly enough so that everything here will give some type of penalty to the person attacking you. Same thing for this line right here. Right here, we have more jungle. This is hills. This right here, I think, is a mountain. Nope, that's hill. And over here, you have another fort along with jungle. So it's really helpful to do these fallback lines. And then, of course, you also want to guard Singapore because that is a port. That is your naval port. If you lose this, you're going to lose some of your supply. So that is your current highest level naval base. I'm pretty sure that's an eight. This right here is a five. So I think, yeah, that's a one. So you want to guard Singapore. You want to guard this line and then this line. Pretty much you make them fight for the entire way to get there. Now, if they invade somewhere in the middle, the way your troops are lined out, you can send one guy really quick to attack here, one guy to attack there. You know, it's pretty much that's the way it's set up. Now let's talk about your home front. So basically for the home front, I've actually got these guys incorrect. Uh, also, 
don't forget to guard Gibraltar because Italy sometimes will naval invade you and Spain and servers is sometimes allowed to join the Axis. So just make sure you're careful with that. You do not, under any circumstance, want to do what I just did unless you're in a single player match. You never want to totally abandon your home islands. Now, if you're going to be pretty much fighting for your home islands, which obviously, again, you should always do, you want to do a few things. One, make sure you have your troops on garrison orders around the entire island, but you want to do it in a certain way. You really want to do here, you want to try to guard your coastline, your airfields, your victory points if you can, because, let's be honest, London is important and then also some forts if you want but really I can get away with just doing this right here now the reason you want to change it up in the north is because up here you just want to do basic garrison troops hold on up here you just want to guard your dockyards now the reason it's so different is because the naval invasions the Axis are going to do are more than likely going to be in the south to capture London and all these ports in the south of England really quick so if you go down here, it's pretty obvious that you're going to need a lot more stuff guarded down here compared to up here where it's only what, like two ports, three ports up here. Yeah, this port here, which is level six, this port here, which is level five, and this one up here, which hardly ever matters. But even still, it's a level eight. So anyway, you just want to remember that, but you should never, ever, ever leave your home island completely defended. Um. And I think that, yeah, that is pretty much it. Now, I will have a few extra tips to cover later on that will be in the comment section below in a pinned comment. If people point out anything I did incorrectly, I will make sure to go ahead down there and edit that little pinned comment. So check that out for any extra tips. Anyway, guys, hopefully this helped you out with your Italy or your uh, UK multiplayer gameplay experience. And hopefully you guys have had a little bit of fun and will have some fun when trying it out. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Stay awesome.